Hello, everyone. Thanks for the chair for the introduction. And thanks to the Cambridge International Journal for organizing the event in such a special way. Well, firstly, I will give a screen sharing. OK, works. So my topic today is the marine genetic resources, specifically the bug sharing mechanism of the upcoming BBNJ instrument. While my presentation is about five parts, firstly is the background of the currently negotiated BBNJ instrument. And secondly, I'm going to introduce the MGRs and its fundamental contradictions. And next, I will show you some specific design process of the benefit sharing of the MGRs. And lastly, I'll uh, analyze some options of the root selections and give my preliminary conclusions. So let's begin with the background. In 2015, the UN General Assembly decided to initiate an internationally legally binding instrument on biodiversity beyond national jurisdiction. Well, till now, there have been four preparatory committees and three intergovernmental conferences. Uh, the fourth one, which is also the last one, was intended to be held in April this year. However, with the influence of the crisis, the conference has been postponed. In November 2019, the president of the IGC has also released a revised draft text that consolidated options raised at previous negotiating sessions. Well, the text is for discussion purposes only. However, it's also very helpful for us to know about what the progress has been made so far about the IGC. The negotiation has addressed the package deal about four elements, just like uh, as displayed. While my, well, my focus is about marine genetic resources. However, what is the MGRs? What's the definition and contradictions among them? Firstly, there is no international agreed or legal definition of MGRs. However, there are some description about genetic material and genetic resources in the Convention of Biological Diversity. Uh, and we can also see from the President's Age Negotiation because it also provides some of the MGRs as following. I think it has inferred by the Convention on the Biological Diversity. Besides, there are also some conflicts between about the legal status of the MGRs, whether under the freedom of the high seas or the principle of common heritage of mankind. Well, from my point of view, neither of these two categories is really applicable to the MGRs. The freedom of the high seas means freely occupation, which might bring the tragedy of the commons back again. However, the CHM are mainly concentrated on the distribution of economic benefits, so it has the implication of property rights. And in practice, the CHM is also manifested as the parallel development mode of the ISA, which makes the distribution of monetary benefits as the main content of the principle. However, its ethical significance has been seriously ignored. Regarding the process of the benefit sharing, there are three main questions, namely the subject, the scope, and the modalities of benefit sharing. Well, in other words, we can also, it can also uh, interpret it as who can share the benefits and who gets the benefits accordingly, what benefits can be shared, and how to share the benefits. So about the duty of sharing, the draft text is now limited to contracting states, but also natural or juridical persons. Regarding the beneficiaries, the draft agreement makes it this party in general. However, considering different interests of institution, special attention could be paid to developing countries. In terms of what benefits can be shared, Article 8 of the draft text sets out the scope of application of MGRs. However, there are also debates about whether the use of fish as commodity and the derivatives can be shared. Most countries insist the former does not belong to genetic resources, so as to avoid the shock on the existing marine fishery order. And also lots of objections to the inclusion of derivatives as well. In cases where the scope of derivative is unknown, such claim is not really reasonable. Well, there is also progress about the traditional knowledge of indigenous people and local communities, since this has been included in the draft text as a separate article. 
However, whether this can be retained is not clear. MGR debates about different excess of the MGRs has to be considered separately, especially on the inclusion of exit excess and encyclical excess. Regarding the sharing modalities, there are two main parts of views in the Libyan joint negotiation process. The first is that it should include both monetary and non-monetary sharing of benefits, in which most developing countries firmly support this position. And the second is more restrictive that monetary sharing can only be achieved through non-monetary forms, which was reflected by the developed countries. And these parties are required to take the necessary legislative, administrative, or policy measures as appropriate in order to ensure the benefits are shared in accordance with the agreement. Accordingly, there are different voices on the rule selection of benefit sharing mechanism, especially the mode of international CBAT authority and the marine scientific research regime. While the RSA is regulated in the Article 140 of the UNCLOS, in general, it has a sound institutional setup and a relatively stable operating mechanism. However, in its practice, it has indeed promoted implementation of the minor resources sharing system in the area. But if the ISA integrates functions into the role of genetic resources or the establishment of a separate MGR body, although there is coherence between the ISA regulatory regime of deep sea mining and potential regime for MGRs. However, such scheme has expanded authority and surely has some adverse effect. Also, the ISA model does not take the specialties of MGRs into consideration, especially the intangible resources form and its longer benefit cycle. Nevertheless, since the negotiation of the non clause is a game of interest in 1980s, most of the content of the 11th part about the area is the compromise between the developed and developing countries. So by simply expanding the function and management of the authority is really not a good option. In terms of the marine scientific research regime, which was proposed by the EU as a pragmatic hybrid solution to the opposition of the freedom of Pisces and the principle of common heritage of mankind. Well, such an option just from part 13 of M clause will also adapt from the Nagoya protocol. However, the practical significance of the MSR is rather limited. Since there is no definition of MSR in M clause, the contents of each provision are too broad and both living and non-living resources are integrated. Besides, the MSR is mainly conducted for the scientific aim, which excludes monetary benefits de facto and the MSR has different regimes outside and within the national jurisdiction. If we return a similar rule in the BBNJ agreement to the framework of MSR, even if the content is reasonable, we will face some extremely serious questions of legitimacy because it blurs the boundary of jurisdiction. So finally, it comes to my preliminary conclusions. While the aim is always to promote a fair and equitable sharing of benefits, However, some elements may not be ignored in this regard. Firstly, the new agreement should not undermine the provision and existing framework of the UNCLOS. However, there are also some lessons can be learned from the multilateral treaties. For example, to build a global multilateral mechanism from the Nagoya Protocol and also recognize different types of benefits in order to decide whether they are shared on a mandatory or voluntary basis in the FAA or plant treaty. As for the guiding principles, the expression of the benefit of mankind as a whole is used in the draft text. I think such wording is desirable so as to avoid the controversies of the principle of common heritage of mankind, while also insist the objective of the fair and equitable sharing. Lastly, about the sharing modalities, due to the special character of the MGRs, there are very few products that are commercially available and have monetary benefits. So the agreement should give priority to non-monetary benefits, while not to share the monetary benefits before the large-scale commercial uses of MGRs. And a possible solution in the job tax is the establishment of a special fund to share monetary benefits during the embargo on genetic sequence data, 
or when commercializing products based on genetic resources. Actually, there is only one conference left in the agenda. However, the text is still largely to be defined and discussed. And some scholars believe that the agreement will finally turn to be a soft treaty in the end. And since lots of divergence may not be solved in a very short time, where the consensus can be reached and what is the final outcome is still remain to be seen. Well, let's just wait and see. And that concludes my presentation. Thank you very much for listening.